All right, here's a couple of try it problems for section 11.4. I know some of the stuff we did in this section was pretty challenging. We talked about solving some formulas using our quadratic techniques, and then we did some application problems. So we were talking about distance and rate and time. It's really important that you're trying some of these problems on your own without me guiding you through. It's a lot easier when we're talking through it together. It's way more challenging when you're by yourself and you've got to start from the very beginning and go all the way through to the end all by yourself. But it's really important that you're doing that so you can see what, por what part of the problem you're struggling with so that we can practice each part and make sure that we fully understand. So what I'd like you to do is pause the video, try these two problems all by yourself. See if you can solve them. See if you can organize yourself, get an equation started, and solve it all the way through, all by yourself, without me guiding you. And then only come back uh, to check your answers or if you're struggling, okay? All right, looking at triad number one, it asks us to solve for k. So I notice in my problem that there's a k here. There's no other k in my problem, but I need to get this k by itself. I notice that I have a 4, a pi, and a squared that I need to get rid of. I'm going to do the coefficient first. That's a number in front. I'm going to get rid of that number, the 4 and the pi, which is really just a number, right? It doesn't look like one, but it is. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that 4 pi that's right next to the k by dividing both sides by 4 pi. The 4, the pi, reduce each other out, and then I'm just left with a k squared on that side. So then I have k squared is equal to s over 4 pi. I can go ahead and get the square away by square rooting both sides. The square and the square root should cancel, and then I'm left with k equals the square root of s over the square root of 4 pi. I notice that there is a square root of 4, so I should actually be able to take out that 4 and say that I really have the square root of s over 2 times pi, because the square root of 4 is 2. Now, the square root is still there and over the pi. There's not enough to bring out groups, so that uh, square root is still there at the denominator. What you notice, though, is that the s has a square root and the pi has a square root. And so you could write this as 1 half times the square root of s over pi, with both of those being underneath that square root, and really a 1 half coefficient. So a couple different ways you can write that final answer. Um, solving for k. All right, let's do one with the distance and the time. This one is similar, but yet a little bit different than the ones that we did in the examples. So it's a good um, test to see if you're understanding the ideas. It says here in number two that a plane travels 120 miles per hour in still air. It flies 140 miles into the wind and 140 miles with the wind in a total of 2.4 hours. Find the wind speed. So now in this problem, we're trying to find the speed of the wind. We don't really want to find the speed of the plane. We want to find the speed of the wind. How fast is, this wind, is the wind blowing? Now, we need to think about the two different ideas that are happening in this problem. One of the ideas is that we're flying into the wind, and one of the ideas is that we're flying with the wind. And if you think about that, if we're flying in the wind, the wind is going to slow us down a little bit, right? If we're flying with the wind, the wind is going to speed us up a little bit because it's going to kind of push us uh, along with our speed. So those are the two kind of ideas that I'm going to use to organize myself. We're going to talk about going into the wind and then flying with the wind. Now I knew that they was talking about distance and speed and time, so I set up my chart. I have distance, I have rate, I have time. Do we know any of these? Well, in the problem, it told us that it went 40 miles. This plane went 40 miles both into the wind and with the wind. So my distance is the same for both uh, times. Now let's talk about the speed. It says here that the plane travels 120 miles per hour in still air. That's with no wind. But if I'm talking about going into the wind, remember my wind is going to slow me down a little bit. So if I was going 120 miles per hour without it, then going into the wind is going to slow me down a little bit. I don't know what the wind speed is, so I'm going to call that x. And so then I'm going to say that my speed going into the wind is 120 minus x. That's my speed with the speed of the wind slowing me down, 120 minus x. So then what would the speed be with the wind? Well, if my normal speed is 120, then going with the wind would be a little bit faster 
depending on what the speed of the wind was. It would be 120 plus x. You notice how I put the x in the back. It makes a difference. In the first part, I don't want to say x minus 120. I'm not slowing the wind down. The wind is slowing me down. So I need to make sure that I subtract from my speed. Now let's talk about time. The only thing it says here about time is that there's a total of 2.4 hours. So I don't really know how much time it is for each part, but I do know that time is the same as distance over rate. So I'm going to set up a time uh, equation for that. I have 140 over 120 minus x and 140 over 120 plus x. I do know that the total of these two times is going to be 2.4 hours. So I can use that idea to set me up an equation. I know that the time of the first part plus the time of the second part should be a total of 2.4 hours. I know that the time of the first part is that 140 over 120 minus x. The time of the second part is the 140 over 120 plus x. And I know that the total time should be 2.4 hours. So here's my equation. Now that I have the equation with all the information in the problem, I can go ahead and start to solve. I've got a bunch of fractions, so I'm going to need some common denominators. It looks like this first fraction has a denominator of 120 minus x, but it's going to need a 120 plus x in the numerator and the denominator. The middle fraction has a 120 plus x, but it needs a 120 minus x in the numerator and in the denominator. The last fraction needs both. It needs a 120 plus x and a 120 minus x in both the numerator and denominator. Now that the denominators are all the same, let's focus on the numerators. I have a 140 times a 120 plus x plus a 140 times a 120 minus x, and then I have it equal to 2.4 times both of those binomials. Here we go. Let's distribute. Let's get rid of the parentheses by distributing the 140 through. Let's distribute this 140 through, and then let's FOIL, and then distribute the 2.4 through. Whew, are you ready? Here we go. When I distributed through the 140s, that's what I got on the left side. On the right side, after I FOILed, this is what I got inside here. I can combine like terms. I notice that I have a positive 120 and a 120x that canceled each other out. So now I can just distribute the 2.4 to that term and the negative 1x uh, squared. When I did that, this is what I have. I notice on the left side that I have a 140x and a negative 140x that canceled each other out. So I have the 16,800 and the 16,800 equal to 33,600. So that's where I got that number on the left side. On the right side, remember I took the 2.4 and I distributed it through. And that's how I got the 34,560 minus the 2.4x squared. Okay, so we're here in the blue. If you notice in the blue equation, I only have an x squared. I don't have any other x terms. Those canceled, right? The 140x and the negative 140x canceled. The 120x and the negative 120x canceled. So I have no more terms with x's. I only have an x squared. That's a little bit different than the other two problems that we did. Those had an x squared and an x, and we had to either factor or use the quadratic formula. Well now, because I just have an x squared, I can go ahead and get everything away from that x squared and square root it in order to solve it, using that principle of square root um, idea. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and get all of my numbers away from the x squared. I'm going to go ahead and subtract both sides by 34,560. I'm going to get the negative 2.4 away by dividing both sides by negative 2.4. I ended up with an equation that said then positive 400 equals x squared. Because there's just an x squared, I can go ahead and square root both sides to get rid of that squared. I ended up getting x equals plus or minus to, uh, 20, plus or minus 20. Okay, remember this was a word problem. I know it seems like forever ago that we started this word problem, but this was a word problem and x represented something. What did that x represent? Well, x represented in our word problem, remember, the speed of the wind. I knew my speed was 120. The wind was either gonna slow me down or speed me up and we called the wind speed x. 
So when I solve it and I get x equals negative 20, that's saying that the speed was blowing at negative 20 miles per hour. That really doesn't make any sense, but positive 20 miles per hour does. So I can say for my final answer with it labeled that the wind speed was 20 miles per hour. Whew, that was another good one. Lots of different things going on here, a little bit different even than the examples uh, we looked at in the section notes. So it's really important that you try and you practice all three different types because they might just be a little bit different, but those little differences make a big difference in the way you approach your problem and solve your problem. So make sure you practice, practice, practice. I know they're not always fun, but the only way that they're gonna get easier is by practicing. So make sure you practice lots in this section. Make sure you do the homework. Make sure that you do similar examples if you need to, to really understand so that you can uh, make sure that you are um, understanding the material and do really well on your tests and your final exam.